Hey guys, it's Dr. Eric at Modosirx Physical Therapy. And in day two of our low back pain series, we're going to talk about how bad is it, okay? We're going to put bad in quotations for a reason, which I'm going to get to here in a little bit. Now, um, first day we talked about how we view back pain on a grand scale. Uh, we got away from anatomy. We got away from the nitty-gritty details of diagnoses and really looked and broke down why low back pain is uh, happening in the first place. Uh, so for day two, we're going to start getting into, on your own, how do you self-assess how bad low back pain is? And I put bad in quotations because when we talk about bad or good in terms of pain, uh, it's not quite exactly the, the appropriate way to talk about it because bad is really all about um, more along the lines of threat, okay? So when I say how bad is my back pain or somebody asks how bad is it, really what they're asking is um, how threatened is your body uh, by what's happening, okay? So pain, for a second, if we can take a positive spin on pain, pain, believe it or not, is actually a good thing, all right? I always, I always stop and, and reassess and kind of reset the, mind frame, uh, the mindset and the mind frame around this stuff because um, pain was designed for a reason in our body, and it was ultimately to protect us from really, really, really bad things happening. And I always say, even though it's tough if you're dealing with chronic pain, uh, if you're really, really frustrated, as many people are, uh, think about how much things might be different if we didn't feel any pain at all, okay? Uh, we would probably suffer a lot more detrimental injuries. We'd probably suffer, as a grand scale, a lot more fatalities. Um, but overall, pain is a mechanism for us to help us protect ourselves, okay, and survive. And so bad, how bad is your back pain? Let's replace bad to how threatened is your body and the processing centers by what's ultimately happening, okay? Um, because pain in a grand scheme of things is really just a perception of threat. It doesn't mean it's in your head. It means that on a grand scale, Pain is an output and is not directly correlated to how much mechanical damage you have somewhere. So um, we're going to talk about if pain is ultimately how threatened are we by something that we're perceiving, um, we're going to try to figure out where are you at in that level of threat, okay? And the way we're going to do it for, for you so that you can follow along and th think about it for yourself, and this is a general way about maybe how we would treat people here in the clinic or assess people here in the clinic is... Um, we're going to do a standing assessment because standing is upright against gravity. Uh, it sounds funny, but it's the most challenging thing to our body is to help us uh, operate and maintain upright in space. Uh, then we go to the second, uh, I guess, regression or level of assessment, and we will go to an all fours assessment, which is just hands and knees, right? So we're not upright 100% in space anymore but we still have to engage some muscles through the shoulders, through the hips, and definitely through the core. Um, and our spine is taking on a different load than we are when we're standing. Uh, theoretically, it's a less of a load. And then the third step, which is uh, probably the biggest regression, is uh, laying down, where our body is actually supported by the ground and we're not having to use as much of our own muscles to control and uh, move us in space. So if we look over here on the right, hopefully you can read this. Um, this is just when we talk about now how threatened is your situation or is your, um, your body by what's happening. We have the standing assessment. If you do pretty well with that stuff and there's not a lot to write home about, then you're probably at the level of the least amount of threat that's happening. And that's going to dictate where we go with your rehab or your initial treatment. Uh, if we go down to the laying assessment and you're struggling and having pain and the different things that we do laying down are challenging, then your body at that point is theoretically the most threatened by whatever is happening in the low back pain or the body. So that's how we break down how bad is it. Now let's get to those assessments for okay, you. Okay, so the first stage in assessing low back pain for yourself and somewhat how we'll do it here in the clinic is a standing assessment. And the reason that we want to assess where you're at standing, all fours, and laying down is for two reasons. Again, it's to figure out where we're going to start your treatment. Do we need to take the approach of more pain relief strategies, uh, hands-on types things to get you feeling less, uh, less guarded, less threatened by whatever's happening? 
um, or is it just that it's a, sp a couple specific movements that don't go so well for you and we're going to gradually build you back into those movements with the right type of uh, input or the right type of challenge, okay? So the standing assessment, it's not always what it seems as well in terms of what we're going to do. So let's say you bend forward and it's painful, you bend backwards and backwards feels really good but it's kind of stiff. Well, instead of tackling the painful zone right on, we might have you do some movements that feel really, really good first in the opposite direction and then come back and see if forward bending feels better even though you didn't do any forward bending, okay? So this is really important in terms of setting up where you're going to go for your treatment plan. But if you're on your own today, it helps you to figure out how bad is it or how threatened ultimately is your body by whatever's happening. So for the standing assessment, we're going to look at a few different things. We're going to look at uh, knees locked out in a forward fold toe touch. So knees locked out, one hand on top of the other. You're going to fold forward and try to touch the toes. Any of this stuff, you certainly do not push through pain or try to set any Guinness records on. It's a baseline level of where you're at. So toe touch, obviously, we're going to try to get down and touch the toes. Okay, we want to see how that feels and what your strategy is for that. We're going to go the opposite direction. Feet together, arms up overhead. And you're going to try to fold backwards, okay? Um, so figure out what those two motions feel like. If you can't do them, obviously we're going to go down to the next stage, which is the all fours. All right, the other thing we're going to do here, standing, we're going to bring the feet shoulder width. We're going to take the hips, hands on the hips, and I want you to imagine keeping your shoulders level and your hips level, but you're trying to essentially shoot the hips to one side as far as you can, and that's what we call a side glide assessment. So you're actually trying to keep your shoulders still and then just push the pelvis sideways under the shoulders. And you want to see again, does one way feel more pain than the other? Is one way not necessarily painful, but it just feels stiffer? Those are important. And then the last thing that we're going to assess, uh, sorry, two things we're going to assess is more of a side bend each direction, where now the pelvis is kind of staying put and you're moving your shoulders. Assess how that feels. And then a feet together, elbows glued to the side, rotation each direction. Okay. Right now we're just trying to gather information. We're trying to look at does the, it basically boils down to very basic, does it hurt or doesn't it hurt? And does it feel different from the other side or the other direction or not? Okay. Let's take a look at all four. Sorry, forgot one thing in the standing phase. We're going to go feet together. We want to look at that unilateral stability or that one-sided stability, right? So we're going to go knee to chest. And you're just going to see if you can, I'm sorry, knee to hip line. You're going to see if you can get your knee in line with your hip. Hold your body upright and not lose your balance. And we're going to try both sides. If that feels way, way too easy, then you can try to add a challenge by closing your eyes and seeing what your stability is like that okay, way. So if any of the movements or motions from the standing position were just too painful to do um, or just too challenging to do, or we want to, again, look for more information, we say, Okay, those didn't feel so good, but we're going to try to give ourselves a little bit of help with the ground and support and see if that changes anything. And that will give us, again, some information about how threatened or how uh, concerned we should be about whatever's happening. And also, we're always concerned, but it's going to be, again, more about what type of action do we take uh, with our initial treatment plan. Okay, so from the all fours position, we're going to look at some of the similar type of movements. We're going to go hands and knees here. Okay, we're going to look at how well we do when we just sit uh, back on our heels. And if we try to push the hands back and hit, sit back on the heels, now what does that do to our lower back area? Okay, we're going to come opposite way. We walk our hands forward a little bit, and now we're going to shoot our hips forward. And so we're going into this backward bending type position. Okay. Overall, at least in terms of the spine, the movement itself is not that different from when we were standing. We're still folding the spine forward, we're still folding the spine backwards, but now there's a different requirement in terms of stability on our body where we're not having to use the body in space to control that. Now we have some help from some different parts of our body in the ground. So it just gives us really good information. If Standing was very challenging for either of these, and then all of a sudden 
we get into these positions, it's a theoretical assumption or a educated guess, but your issue might be a lot more about strength and stability and control more so than flexibility and range of motion and getting into the certain position. That's a jump, but at least it's a good piece of simple information for us to have, and it's not too far of a jump that I would consider it something that you shouldn't try to do on your own. The other thing we're going to do from here, a little bit of a kneeling side glide now. I'm sorry, all four side glides. So keep the shoulders and hips in the same position, and we're just going to try to drop the hips to one side as far as we can. This becomes a little bit different than the side glide, but again, gives us some general information about how we feel through the low back and the hips from here. Okay, and then we can also do our rotations again. So if we bring the hand behind the back, we can look at trying to open up this way, and we can try to look at folding down this way with rotation. Now if it just feels really, really stiff and limited one way or the other, and it's not painful, then we might start working on some movements from here, especially if standing in those different positions was painful, and now it's not. Okay? Um, so you have sitting back in the heels, you have going into low back extension, you have the different kind of sideways moves, and then you have the um, rotation as well. Now the other thing we can do, much like we did the single leg stance, is we can do a little bit of a um, stability check from here now. So we can either go opposite arm and opposite leg. How do you do with that? Okay. We can also do a move where we get ourselves in a half kneeling position. We line the heel up with the knee and we try to come up tall from there and see what our stability is like in a half kneeling position. So these last two Let's say you don't really have any pain or mobility issues with those first things that we did in the all fours position. Uh, now we're going to check this type of stuff to see really ultimately do we have a core stability or a hip stability type uh, issue that we'd want to program into your, uh, your homework right away. Give it a shot. Okay, so lastly we're going to do some self-assessments here, pretty much laying on the ground and being more trunk supported on the ground. Now the way to think about this is the first things we did standing, we were like a big um, big skyscraper that was just kind of up in space and we were kind of having to deal with all the elements and obviously be tall and it required a lot of support on our own. When we come down to the all fours position, now we're a, uh, a wider building uh, with more kind of square footage but we're not as tall and we have a nice base of structure that we still have to um, do, some, do some work to support ourselves, but we certainly have a lot more solid foundation. Now, on the ground here, uh, I don't know what the next analogy is, but we have all the support in the world, and we're really just having to focus on maybe an individual uh, joint or segment to move while the rest of the object is supported by the ground. So this is where if you have pain or limitations from this position, then we definitely know we're starting back in that more threatened state and we're probably going to want to take more hands-on approaches or do more pain relief, pain reduction type strategies. They can still be movements, but we're going to want to um, regress them and, and kind of introduce them slowly and appropriately for you. So um, pretty straightforward here. You can kind of guess maybe where we're going. On our back, for the um, flexion or the bend of the spine, we're just going to bring our feet and our knees together. We're going to keep them together, and we're going to see how far we can pull our knees to our chest. To let the knees or feet separate and see how that does for the low back. Okay. We can also do um, feet flat, and we can get a little bit of a rotation. For that rotation assessment, we can go each way here. Okay. And then for the backward extension, we can do more of a bridge type thing where now we're a little bit more controlled. We're having to work against gravity, but the amount of low back extension that we work on is a little bit different. Um, so that's a, a way to test the extension from this position. Sometimes even just the ability for you to go 
knees bent from here to feet flat, if all of a sudden laying flat like this, you start feeling that more, it gives us a sense of how much um, irritability there is in the low back. And this is kind of a good, simple way to mimic that lower back extension uh, while we're on our back. So these would be the assessments we would do laying down. Of course, if you're painful or really struggle with any of these types of movements, then uh, this is probably the most threatened state that we're going to be looking at from a self-assessment. And we recommend at that point that you definitely are probably getting a thorough evaluation from your, your medical provider of choice. Um, if, uh, if the earlier session or the earlier movements, sorry, standing are stiff, rigid, but nothing's really so bad that you have to stop doing them or getting out of position, then you may benefit from more of a active based care uh, where you could solve it on your own or take care of it on your own with some specific exercises or some specific, uh, specific help that somebody can send you. So there's the different levels of threat. Hopefully from a self-assessment standpoint, you can try these things and you can really get an idea of in that range where are you at and then certainly give us some feedback about where you're at because we can help you more specifically in your case even if we're not there with you physically. Um, the, the series that we're going to talk about next is all about the three most common or best exercises that we prescribe for low back pain. It might not necessarily apply to your unique situation, but it gives you an idea of how we view things when we move on to the treatment phase. Give this all a shot. Thanks for hanging with me today. It was a long one.